Love playing games? Because we do. And we love building them too. So join us for a fun-packed gaming session and learn about creating games with gamers and young kids like yourself. Presenting Creative Space Gamers Camp. If you like gaming, then you'll love this event. After a tremendous response to its first edition, Creator Space is back with another fun learning event. Dream of being a pro gamer? Get your answers from Dayan Vitano, serial entrepreneur, gamer and a Stanford graduate. Join the Game Masters League with Akshay Shinde, AVP of Product Management and a Startup Expert. Build 3D experiences with Genevieve Johnson, Senior Instructional Designer at Roblox and former Educational Content Manager at ID Tech. Also get a chance to meet and celebrate the young minds who are changing the future every day along with their teachers. So come and explore with us the exciting world of gaming at Creator Space Gamers Camp. Register for free at creatorspace.byjusfutureschool.com today. Mr. James, it's Hello. an absolute honor to have you amongst us today. It's time to hear it from the world-renowned mathematician, Dr. Joe Bowler. And right there, we're thinking in numbers, we're thinking visually. It's going to cause those important brain connections. All right, machine learning is one of the most common, way, common ways in which artificial intelligence interact with us. And here is the answer. The answer is Jupiter. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And our first high five award for the key contributor goes to Yasmin Isha. So this is like, Super special. Let's put our hands together. Mohit Bai Khole, Param.S, and Madhurita Mukherjee. Congratulations to all you guys. Uh, your questions are brilliant. My name is Julian Rapport. I am 13 years old from New York City. When I was traveling around the world with my mom, I had the idea of a travel app for kids and the coding projects that I've been working on have helped me develop this app. You can watch me live at the Creator Space Gamers Camp Amp on June 12th at 7.30 p.m. Hi, I'm Genevieve Johnson, and I'm a senior instructional designer for Roblox. I believe that coding and design can really empower students to build the future. Catch my session live at Creator Space Gamers Camp, where I'll be talking about all the different people just like yourself who make Roblox experiences. I'm going to give you a sneak peek of how it's done and how it can help you prepare for your future careers. So if you love creation as much as I do, don't forget to sign up for Creator Space Gamers Camp. Remember to keep your calendars marked for the 12th of June at 7.30 p.m. IST. See you there. Do you love playing games like I do? Have you ever wondered why are games so interesting? Find out the efforts that go behind creating these awesome games from experts at Creative Space Gamers Camp. There's going to be talks from leading experts in gaming industry, fun quizzes and lots of prizes. Best part? It's a free event. So don't miss out. Register now and watch the live event on 12 June 7.30 p.m. Hi, I am Dejan Vitanov and I'm a serial entrepreneur currently serving as the Chief Marketing Officer at Playco. I've been obsessed with video games ever since I was nine and it was through gaming that I found my true calling. If your child has a passion for gaming too, empower them to turn it into a career. Catch my session, Seriously Fun Gaming, 
live only at Creator Space Gamers Camp, where I will take you backstage into the world of game design. Follow the link in my captions to register for the event. Creator Space Gamers Camp goes live on June 12th at 7.30 p.m. IST. I hope to see you there. Hello everyone, I am Mana Prusti, 10 years old from Bhuvaneshwar, a coder from White Hat Junior Platform. I got the inspiration of my app Be Safe Inside during this COVID-19 pandemic. With the help of this app, the authorities of confined spaces such as shopping malls can track the number of customers inside and can also prevent additional customers from entering. You can watch me live at Whitehead Junior Creator Space Gamers Camp at 7.30 p.m. on 12th of June. So don't forget to tune in. Thank you. Aren't video games really amazing? As a programmer, what fascinates me about video games is the amount of hard work and effort that goes into creating a gaming experience. If you're as curious as me, you're going to love Creator Space Gamers Camp. Explore the wonderful world of gaming with talks by leading experts in the gaming industry. There will be games, quizzes, and so many prizes to be won. It's an open learning event, so register now to sign up and watch the event live at 7.30pm on the 12th of June. Oh, it's time for me to get back to my game now. Hello everyone, my name is Edwin Chukla. I am 9 years old from Germany. Eating fresh vegetables is very important for good health. So, my idea is to create an app that utilizes balcony or kitchen space to grow all vegetables. I am glad to announce that I am one of the young dictionaries chosen at Whitehead Junior to present my app in front of all of you. You can catch me live on Whitehead Junior Creator Space Gamers Camp on the 12th of June at 7.30pm. Don't forget to tune in!
Love playing games? Because we do. And we love building them too. So join us for a fun-packed gaming session and learn about creating games with gamers and young kids like yourself. Presenting Creator Space Gamers Camp. If you like gaming, then you'll love this event. After a tremendous response to its first edition, Creator Space is back with another fun learning event. Dream of being a pro gamer? Get your answers from Dayan Vitano, serial entrepreneur, gamer and a Stanford graduate. Join the Game Masters League with Akshay Shinde, AVP of Product Management and a startup expert. Build 3D experiences with Genevieve Johnson, senior instructional designer at Roblox and former educational content manager at ID Tech. Also, get a chance to meet and celebrate the young minds who are changing the future every day along with their teachers. So come and explore with us the exciting world of gaming at Creator Space Gamers Camp. Register for free at creatorspace.byjusfutureschool.com today. Mr. James, it's Hello. an absolute honor to have you amongst us today. It's time to hear it from the world-renowned mathematician, Dr. Joe Bowler. And right there, we're thinking in numbers, we're thinking visually. It's going to cause those important brain connections. All right, machine learning is one of the most common, way, common ways in which artificial intelligence interacts with us. And here is the answer. The answer is Jupiter. Wonderful, wonderful. And our first high five award for the key contributor goes to Yasmin Bisha. So this is like Super special. Let's put our hands together. Mohit Bai Kole, Param.S, and Madhurita Mukherjee. Congratulations to all you guys. Uh, your questions were brilliant. My name is Julian Rappaport. I am 13 years old from New York City. When I was traveling around the world with my mom, I had the idea of a travel app for kids. And the coding projects that I've been working on have helped me develop this app. You can watch me live at the Creator Space Gamers Camp Amp on June 12th at 7.30 p.m. Hi, I'm Genevieve Johnson, and I'm a senior instructional designer for Robots. I believe that coding and design can really empower students to build the future. Catch my session live at Creator Space Gamers Camp, where I'll be talking about all the different people just like yourself who make Roblox experiences. I'm going to give you a sneak peek of how it's done and how it can help you prepare for your future careers. So if you love creation as much as I do, don't forget to sign up for Creator Space Gamers Camp. Remember to keep your calendars marked for the 12th of June at 7.30 p.m. IST. See you there. Hi there. Do you love playing games like I do? Have you ever wondered why are games so interesting? Find out the efforts that go behind creating these awesome games from experts at Creative Space Gamers Camp. There's going to be talks from leading experts in gaming industry fun quizzes and lots of prizes. Best part? It's a free event. So, don't miss out. Register now and watch the live event on 12 June 7.30 p.m. Hi, I am Dejan Vitano and I'm a serial entrepreneur currently serving as the Chief Marketing Officer at Playco. I've been obsessed with video games ever since I was nine and it was through gaming that I found my true calling. 
If your child has a passion for gaming too, empower them to turn it into a career. Catch my session, Seriously Fun Gaming, live only at Creator Space Gamers Camp, where I will take you backstage into the world of game design. Follow the link in my captions to register for the event. Creator Space Gamers Camp goes live on June 12th at 7.30 p.m. IST. I hope to see you there. Okay, welcome everyone. I'm pretty sure it's a very exciting day for everybody and I'm your host for tonight, Purva Gera. So Creator Space is back and so is Gamers Camp and I'm pretty sure none of us can wait, right? So kids love gaming and parents always wonder how much is too much? If gaming has fascinated you or left you puzzled, this event is just for you. So why join J J uh, Gamers Camp? Because you get to play and code with the best in the world. You acquire new skills in building 3D experience. You get all your questions answered as gaming as a career becomes you know, demystified to you. And guess what? You get to celebrate with thousands of students with live polls, quizzes, and win exciting prizes. So I'm pretty sure everyone is excited as I am. Now, there are a couple of things which I'm going to call out, okay? And as audience, all of you need to know that. One, keep an eye out for all the polls that you would get because there are some very exciting prizes to be won. We're going to do a very popular treasure hunt where you will get the clues on the app and the final notification will have a link to submit your answer. So listen up, folks. There's a mega prize for the winner of the treasure hunt. And a big shout out to all my friends on YouTube. If you're already there, the lovely audience watching us, uh, please keep liking and showing your love to the session. We really need that a lot. So let the gaming begin. With that, I would quickly welcome our first segment uh, by called the Game Masters League. And we have Rajiv Jha, our advanced game designer, TFI fellow and creator of our curriculum. We know that Akshay couldn't join us, but we have Rajiv and he is fantastic. So Rajiv, over to you. Hi, Purva. Good evening, everyone. Um, uh, Purva, I still can't start my video. Okay, yeah, thank you. Good evening, everyone from this part of the world. Uh, great to see everyone. Um, so I have I have 15, 20 minutes to show you how games are designed. And I'm going to do my best to do justice to that time. Um, so let's begin. Um, all right. Okay. So so talking about game game design and how games are built, we'd like to start with playing a game, right? And I and there's so many people on chat here. Uh, let's let's start with a game. And this game is called Game of 24. Um, what I do is I'll give you four random numbers on the screen. And I want to see who is the first one to get 24 uh, by, by applying any arithmetic operation to those numbers, right? So four numbers, I'll, I'll give you four random numbers and you have to apply any arithmetic operation to it, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, or anything else to get 24, okay? The first is easy, easy, easy four numbers. Let's see who gets it right. I'm going to monitor the chat to see who gets it right. First four numbers are one, two, three, and four. Let's see who gets uh, who gets 24 quickly. All right. Um, Okay, so so as as some of you some of you already guessed, it's if you, if you multiply four times three times two, you get and times one, you get twenty four. So so that's 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 the that's the first. Let, let's do another round. Let's see um, with another round who gets twenty four. So the, the other four numbers are five five four and three. I quickly stop sharing to see the chat. Um, Five, five, four, and three. Come on. I saw Parth Singh had got it right last time. 
five, five, four, and three. How do you how do you get twenty four using it? These numbers. Awesome. Uh, someone has got it. Five times five, twenty five plus three, twenty eight minus twenty four. Perth Singh again. Great Perth. So Perth got it right uh, again. Um, quickly sharing my screen back. Okay. So, so, and we can, we can keep on playing, right? Like games are really fun and we can keep on playing. But the question that we want to ask is what makes games so interesting, right? Like we love to play any kind of games or any, any, I mean, either video games, physical sports or any kind of game. We love playing it. We can love, we can play for hours, but what makes games so interesting, right? And, and, and that's the first question that we need to ask. And as a game designer, I can tell you all games follow a common framework. Right? There are certain key elements which all games all games have, right? And we're going to talk about those elements. The first element is goal. Every game will give you a clear defined goal, right? Like either it be finding someone, finding something, or getting some getting at some place, or overcoming overcoming something. But they, all games will give you a very clearly defined goal, so that every player when they get uh, to start playing the game, they know what they have to do. But goal is goal itself is not enough, right? Like, let's say I design a game where a cyclist has to reach to a finish line. And just, if I just do that, would this be an exciting game? I guess, no, I mean, that wouldn't be exciting, right? Like we just have to cycle and reach to a certain place. But what if I do this? What if I create so many different kinds of obstacles, right? I create rocks, I create you know, uphill, downhill uh, pathways. Would this be exciting? It would, right? Like, yes, it would. And, and so we need to plan for different levels of obstacles in our games, right? So, so games have goals, but they also have obstacles for you to reach those goals. And that's what makes game really interesting, right? Like uh, overcoming those obstacles is what makes games interesting. There are also two different kinds of games. Uh, uh, some games are games of skill, others are games of chance. Can, can someone, can someone uh, in your chat, can someone just, Mention games which you think are games of skill, which involves you to apply some kind of specialized skill. Uh, whereas, can you also point out games which you know you think are games of chance, where there is some randomization happening, something random happening, and you know the game is based on that. Quickly on chat, if you can, you know, uh, okay, Minecraft skill, Ludo. What is Ludo? Bingo is chance. Okay, okay, great. Fortnite is skill. Yeah. So, so certain certain elements, certain, uh, um, certain games are uh, uh, games of skill and certain games are games of chance. Good games have both of them, right? Like good games have both games of skill and games of chance. And, and that's what makes, uh, that works, that's what makes games, uh, you know, really, uh, really powerful. Those games which have both these elements are really powerful, right? Like for example, giving you back those examples, if, if, in my game where there's a cyclist who is who is cycling on the track if i if i randomly create a kind of weather in the game where sometimes it's rainy sometimes it's sunny and the tracks behave differently depending on the kind of weather that would be some some uh, uh, some chance being introduced into the game right so and that would make the game more fun than what it'd be without it right so so good games have both skill and chance in them uh, coming to the next next element all good games have story. Uh, whether whether that story is something that is explicitly told to you, or a story which you build while you are playing the game, right? Every game will have some kind of story. Uh, to give you an example, uh, if if the cyclist, let's say the cyclist is a girl who is a superhero, and her skills are that of a super girl. I mean, uh, she she has skills on the cycle which she can show off, right? That would make the game even more exciting. And if, if we add more story to it, more characters and, and sort of more design about the world, that would make the game even more fun, more fun to play, right? right? Where you can start living that, uh, uh, living in that world while you're playing the game. So stories make game fun and, and, and sort of like uh, people want to live in the world which, which games build. Okay, so there's one more thing uh, uh, which makes game really interesting and which makes, which makes game distinguished from one another. Like there's so many games 
which are published every day. All games have these elements which we talked about, right? All games have goals, obstacles, skill, chance, story. Anyone, can you guess what makes games, uh, you know, really different? One one game really different from the other. Why are some games so super popular while other games are hardly played by anyone? Any guesses from anyone here? Like what makes what makes some games really really popular while others are not so popular? Okay, so before before I before I tell you that. I want you to take two minutes of time and quickly think before I tell you the secret sauce, which makes game really interesting and, and different from one another. I want you to quickly take two minutes of time. If you have a paper nearby, quickly think of a game with a clear goal, different levels of difficulty, uh, something which has a skill and a chance and a story element in it, right? And don't overthink, like come up with the first thing that comes in your head. If you if you if you are, if you're living in the in if you, if you play games you'd know there are all weird kind of games with weird kind of goals. Uh, um, uh, for example, one of one of the very popular games which when, when the game started building and one of the very popular games which hit everyone was Pac Man where where just a yellow dot was eating all the all the smaller dots right so that's that's the kind of goal simple goal which you can build right like so quickly if you if you can take two minutes of time think of, of any kind of game uh, which you would like to build and think of any goal. Think of what are the difficulties which you would uh, which you would create. Think of all the elements of of uh, skill and chance which you would add, and think of a story. So just take a minute and and think about it. If you if you if you if you're on chat, just you know uh, um, comment on chat with what your goal, what your goal, what your difficulties. Uh, difficulties in the game are what what elements of skill and chance you're adding what is the story um, uh, you want in your game to be and I, I would uh, I would I would and then I'll tell you the secret sauce which makes game really different from uh, which makes which makes some games stand out from the others think about a unique goal I'm seeing some some um, very common uh, uh, game goals being put there think of really unique which, which, which is your game, which you can tell, I built it, I designed it. Think of a goal, it could be anything. Really, it could be anything. It could be, it could be you chasing a, a cat. Uh, that could be your goal, finding the cat, right? Like you could build obstacles. Maybe you have to cross hills to, you know, to, to catch the cat. Uh, think of what elements of skill and chance you would add, what would be the story, why you're chasing the cat. Maybe it's your pet and it's running away. Um, so so just, just be wild and, and uh, be ingenious. Okay, so quickly, let me tell you what the secret sauce of, of games is. Uh, the secret sauce of good games is balance. Let me explain you what balance is. Like all, all good games have a great balance. That's what makes games different. And, and, and uh, that's what makes you know uh, uh, gamers or users get hooked to the game. Let me give you an example. You must have seen a lot of games with a health bar, right? Where players have health bar. What happens when you have a full health bar? When you have a full health bar, you take more risks and more chances because you know you have a full health. You try to explore the world in which you are living and you try to take more chances. Because you're taking more risks and more chances, your health bar goes down. And when your health bar goes down, you start taking lesser risks and lesser chances. That's balance, right? Like one thing leads to another, and another thing influences the first thing, right? Like so, that's what that's what a balance is. And all good games have multiple balance points, right? Like uh, they will always make you think: Should I do this or should I do that? Is this better or is that better? Uh, and this, this, these kind of balances uh, keeps the players hooked into your game, right? So, so as a game designer, as a game developer, when you're thinking about designing games, think about all the different ways in which you can make you can make your game more balanced and you can make the make the players think should i do this or should i do that so this in brief is what uh, uh designing games are like right? like all games you need to think about these there are of course many other things but these are the core elements which make a game like your goal your story your obstacles that you add in 
skill, chance, and balance, right? Like that's what good games are built off. And if you think about it, if you think about life, and if you think about uh, uh, the goals that you set and the obstacles that you have in your uh, in your life, the story that you're playing, I mean, life itself, you can see it as a game uh, and, and enjoy living and enjoy designing games. With that, uh, this, this is this is what this is what game designing is, and of course, as you as you learn and as you discover more uh, about games, you'll get deeper into it. But with that, I wanted to show you one game, which is which is designed by one of us here. I want to quickly quickly show you the game. Can we have the game on the screen, please? Okay, so this is this is a three D game. And some of the elements that we talked about in the game are here. There's, there's a character, uh, the two characters here. And uh, if we can start playing the game. You can see there are some obstacles here. Uh, uh, the red and the green lines, I mean, they're obstacles. Uh, so you have to overcome them. And, 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 the, and there are four, the three players you see on the screen. The, the first player to reach the end point wins. Um, and you see these obstacles have to overcome them. You see this is a 3D, 3D space. Um, and the kind of world which where this is. Um, and yeah, the first player to cross, you see these, these kind of lighting and, and uh, sort of like fun that is there in the game. All right, you see someone is someone is already close to, I mean, there are two people who are close to winning and, and let's see who wins, I mean. Okay, so, so, so this, is, this, is how game, this is how game ends. And you'll be surprised by who created this game. Uh, the creator of this game is seven-year-old uh, Kultes. Uh, can we have Kultes on the screen, please? Hello. Hi. Hi, Kultes. Hi, great to see you. Uh, we saw your game and we played your game. Great to have you on the on, on the screen here. Yeah, can we have Kultes on the spotlight? Hi. So, so Kultes, just one question for you. What inspired you to uh, create this game? Um, I, I used to watch my sister playing Roblox and I started liking Roblox. I started playing with her. I like to play Adami, Orog Bay, and Club Roblox. Mm -hmm. so, so you saw your sister playing Roblox and you got inspired and you sort of experimented with it to build this game. Uh -huh. That's really great. That's really, that's really great. Um, and, and, and everyone here, I mean, the audience here, I'm, I'm seeing all of you are so passionate about creating games and building games. Uh, we have, we at White Hat here have a, a, a way for you to start building these kind of 3D games. Um, so you can go, if you want to build your own game with, with help of what we are doing at White Hat, uh, you can go to your dashboard. Uh, can we have the, can we have the dashboard on the screen? So as a student of White Hat, you can go to your dashboard um, and you can unlock the infinite game challenge, my first infinite game challenge. Once you unlock it, you will you will get an application form to fill. Uh, and and this, with this, we're launching the, uh, the Game Masters League mm -hmm. and, and you can apply for the Game Masters League. And, and uh, uh, we have a lot of templates for you uh, to start building and designing games. And you, you can get started with uh, with designing games uh, through our templates. Can we quickly show the templates that we have for students to start designing games? These are some of the templates uh, uh, that we have for, for uh, helping you design games. This is kind of a game world uh, that we have built for you, ready-made game world, but partnering, partnering with Roblox, uh, which will help you, uh, you know, uh, uh, design games and get started with uh, game development quickly. Cool. That's all from my side, Purva. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the time. 
Perfect, Rajiv. That was fantastic. And Kultej, you're a little rock star, I must say. I mean, when I was your age, I could barely sketch. And here you are. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, with that, I'm quickly going to come to the next section. And guess what? This just keeps getting interesting and interesting, okay? Because uh, let me just welcome a few very, very special guests tonight. Uh, let me first uh, welcome Karan Bajaj, who's our CEO. Trapti Makkar, who is the customer experience head and our chief learning officer, Balaji. Do we have all of you? Yes, awesome. And here we also have our little rock stars, okay? So I'm going to uh, quickly check if all of them are on screen. So we have Athar, Pratham, Zayan, Kwahish, Ananya, and Sophie. So we know there are a lot of superstars here tonight. Let me first start off by giving a hard time to the seniors first, okay? Karan, my question to you, and Tripti, I don't see you on the screen. Can someone add Tripti as well, please? We need some diversity here. Okay, so while Tripti gets added, Karan, how old were you when you became the CEO? Very old compared to the guys, but like uh, 38, 37. 37, 38. Wow. And you know, the people who've, I wouldn't say people, the kids who won the CEO yes. for the day, how are, how old are they? Can you just take a guess? Seven. The youngest one. The Seven. youngest one is six, Karan. So... <laughs> <laughs> my God. Okay. Now with that, I'll first have my question ready for Tripti. Tripti, uh, you know, as a mother, I know you were, you know, you often question yourself on how much is too much with respect to gaming. So can you throw some perspective on that for our audience? Because we have a lot of parents out here and I'm sure they would want to, you know, hear you well, out as well. Uh, I have a 12 year old who has been in gaming since last four years, right? And he's absolutely absolutely uh, crazy about it so I keep stopping him and he keeps convincing me it's it's productive so I'm just trying to understand from all our expert speakers today uh, how to make that time really productive perfect so Tripti will be following all this with keen curiosity herself uh, Balaji my question to you because you're hugely creative so how do you think games you know help build creativity further well, see, at its core, creativity is all about play, right? You know, when we are creative, what we are doing is we are taking one idea and experimenting with it and connecting it with another idea in a very fun way, right? And, um, you know, when played right with balance, um, games can really build that uh, and nurture that spirit of play in children, right? And, um, you know, give them, give them ways to express uh, you know, their ideas in, you know, in novel, new, unexpected ways. Amazing. So on that note, uh, just keep creativity as the bottom line today. Let's see what these young CEOs have created. Okay, so can we have the AV now, please focus on the AV.
Okay, so wasn't that fantastic? On that note, I would quickly like to welcome our first six CEOs for the day. Let us first hear from the first three of them. Atharv Thakur on stage, please. Pratham and Sophie. Okay, so uh, all of you are very excited to chat with Karan, Balaji and Tripti, I'm sure. So, Tripti, over to you. I know you can't wait to ask them the question that you have for them, right? Can we have the kids on the spotlight, please? Yeah, so... Go ahead, Tripti. So, Atharv, Pratham and Sophie. Can we have Sophie as well? All right. So, uh, Atharv and Pratham, while we wait for Sophie. Sophie is there. Can I just do something? You're fine. You're here. Um, so yeah, we can see you, Sophie. Yeah. Okay, so Tripti, you had a question for them, right? So, okay. why don't you ask them the question? So firstly, okay. congratulations for being our C of the day. Uh, Sophie would love to hear what is your favorite game and why? Well, my favorite game is probably Minecraft because um, because um, there's different there's different options and um, well, um, while playing it boosted my creativity and problem solving skills. Amazing. So. The next question, the same question for Pratham and Atharv also, right? All right. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So Pratham and uh, Atharv, can you also share your favorite quest, uh, well, your favorite games with yeah. us, please? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes. Okay. So li let's hear it from Atharv first. Yes. My favorite game is also mine. Minecraft and I like Minecraft because there are so much challenges and fights and my most favorite part of this game is building some things with redstone and building mansions and mining. Right. Other building mansions. Are you going to do that when you grow up? Okay. I think Athar can't yes, hear us. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Pratham, no, what no, about I you? Can, I can, I okay, you can hear me. So my question, sorry. Go um, ahead, Pratham. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Can you just speak a little louder? And my favorite game is GT5 because in GT5 we have to complete the missions and there are realistic cars. And my, I like car racing games. And there are there is very interesting games also. Amazing. Fantastic. Sophie, I know you had something to say about, uh, you know, becoming a CEO, right? I, I think there's a little bit of network lag. Please bear with me. Sophie, I hope you can hear me okay. Okay. Sophie, just wave. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Unmute yourself. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. You were figuring that out. Sophie, who's a CEO? I know you answered that last time. Um, a CEO is a chief executive officer. Wow. And what will you do if you become a CEO? Um, well, I probably, um, well, I really like, I like advertising. So I probably advertise to thousands. <laughs> Okay, you'll advertise to thousands. My God, the kids never, you know, stop surprising me. So I'm sure uh, you enjoyed this conversation. And Pratham, uh, you you are really looking such a stud with that backdrop. And Athar, we don't see that smile. Okay, yes. brilliant. So ladies and gentlemen, this was the first three CEOs for the day. Let's hear it for them. And with that, we move to the next three. And we know Balaji already has a question for them. So can we have Zayan, Kwahish, and Ananya in the spotlight, please?
Hi, Quayish. Good morning. Good evening. Good morning. Okay. Zayan, Quahish, and Ananya. Okay. Perfect. I so think what? the kids are there. Uh, Balaji, I'm sure you are you're waiting for your question. Oh, Ananya, no, we can't see you. Quahish, which part of the world are you dialing in from, Quahish? I think you're on mute, Quaish. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, I'm from Qatar. Okay, I'm wow. I'm Qatar right now. That's cool. So that's good evening to you there then. Yeah, awesome. Uh, who's, who are the others who are coming in here other than Quaish? I think Zayan and uh, Aran, yeah. right? Yes, that's right. So Zayan and Ananya, do we have you? Romil? Can we so get while they're coming in, Quaish, I just wanted to ask you, uh, you know, what kind of games do you want to build in future? I would like to build games with many options in just one game, maybe like one game with many things like Sudoku, Word Search, Find the Difference. So instead of needing to download so many, there is just one which has many purposes. So you never get bored of it. Uh, yeah, that's cool. It reminds me when I was uh, you know, a young kid, we used to get these board games, you know, 101 board games in just one game. You know, it kind of feels like that, you know, lots of fun in one package. That's a great idea. Uh, do we have Zayana or uh, Ananya? Any? Rommel, Rohan, do we have them? So have you tried building any games, uh, Kwaish? I have done the ones in our projects and classes. Mm -hmm. uh, an extra game that I tried to make was the one that I wanted to make on games. Oh, that's um, great. With any options but i couldn't make all the games in it i had to check it from other websites except the tic-tac-toe which we learned in our last class got it like uh, like give me some uh, examples of what games you were able to make in, uh, in your attempt um word search okay find the difference got it and a few more oh, it's good, that's good. You know, keep going at it. You know, I think it's great that you're uh, you're researching from other websites and uh, learning from different sources to build your games. You know, that's you know that's the way the world works, where everyone you know kind of learns from each other and keeps making things better and better. So well done there. Thank you, sir. Perfect. So I think Ananya is also back. Hi, Ananya. Oh, I can hear you, but I can't see you, Ananya. Ananya, can you put your camera on? How old are you, Ananya? Ananya, stop sharing and start sharing again. Start your camera again. Try that. Okay, so it seems Ananya is facing an issue. So we will just check for the last time, else we'll quickly move on. Uh, Ananya, can you try saying something? We can hear you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, technology sometimes will make these things difficult. So we'll quickly move on and invite Karan on stage, please. Hi. Congratulations, Sophie, Atharva, Pratham, Zian, Kwaish, Ananya. Firstly, congratulations. I love your ideas um, and uh, I love your enthusiasm. I love your creativity. I uh, I feel very special about this the the game development thing because I think it's uh, it's a very rare confluence of um, something which is extremely creative yet very very challenging. And uh, if you find something like this to do with your life, right, which is very creative, very challenging, 
it never feels like even a day of work uh, so in the last like 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 last few years of doing the startup and before that writing and 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 like running a media company i felt the same way that like it was very creative very challenging and i i feel like the last 10 years were a dream in terms of how much i lo- lo- love doing that so i feel that uh, i feel that you, you are incredibly both incredibly gifted and incredibly fortunate that at such a young age you are doing things that are so skillful and so creative i think you'll have a wonderful life if you, this becomes a part of your life every for each year that comes so delighted delighted to hear your ideas and loved some of i was making some notes of what you liked about games creativity skill uh, solving problems and and some of your ideas from virtual reality to you know using recycle stuff it's amazing and and i i i love the fact that you're going to keep thinking of ideas like these each year and uh, yeah like uh, it'll be great for the world also so thank you perfect that was a beautiful message uh, karan balaji thank you so much for joining uh, tripti and we know the kids enjoyed this too okay perfect with that i know it's time for something that all of you have been patiently waiting for so let me quickly uh, you know introduce the next segment so our next guest and the speaker tonight is someone very very special we have genevieve who's the senior instructional designer for your favorite roblox which is the world's largest user generated social platform for play so by creating educational content and advising educators worldwide on how to use roblox in steam based learning programs uh, more students are going to be empowered and without further ado i'm going to quickly welcome genevieve genevieve over to you we've just been waiting for this session Hi. hello everyone it's so good to be here i've been excited about this all week so i've been working at roblox for the last 4 years um and let's see i know i have some some students who are off camera or on camera are they on right now like yes, sorry they are and- Cool. Yes they are some of them are facing a little bit of a technical glitch but i'm sure some of them can participate no problem all right so to you guys who are in the classroom with me so to speak sometimes i'm asked questions and so really what i want to do is just like to be able to get like your opinion you know i want to know more about why you guys are here and what you want to learn so feel free to answer the question and during the same time i'm going to have some polls for you guys cuz i want to know why you guys want to make games and why you guys are here but i'm really really super happy to be to be here and i think we're good to go yep absolutely so we also have sadia mahe riya parth advet and manav i hope you know your cameras are on and you're all set as genevieve takes it from here all right thank you very much i'll see you in a minute prabha all right so as i was saying my name is genevieve Give me just a second. I'm going to share my screen out so I can show you some of the things that I work on. And I can talk to you a little bit about creating on Roblox. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about what Roblox is. I'm going to talk about who's involved, like how is it made, and then I'm going to have some time for a Q&A. So the first thing I want to ask, and I have a bunch of stuff behind so you guys know, is what is Roblox? And I want you guys uh my little classroom here to answer this for me who's got an answer like to say what is roblox in your opinion Let's see aj or abet what do you think roblox is that go ahead and tell me oh um roblox is a game where there's like characters and there's going to be like obvious and fun things to do with and um kids they can always add more games into roblox so it's a it's a, so it's a good place for gamers and for coders all right anyone want to add something to that yes i want to do uh, roblox is just like minecraft but it is way more better means i like it more than minecraft <laughs> well, we appreciate that i also like minecraft you know you can like multiple yes. different you know for your experiences but i uh, most likely like uh, like roblox oh thank you okay and ria what what's roblox to you um so i think that it's like kind of a platform where people can also make games they 
don't have to just play them you can also make games um and it also has like a lot of stuff that a lot of games don't like you can add friends and chat and stuff yeah so all of these things that you guys have said really are what roblox is and more so roblox is a global platform meaning it's all across the world and every day people are coming together and they're like going to imagine, you know, they're going to like role play and they're going to take on different characters. They're going to create, they can share their own experiences and they can share those experiences out with their friends. So we saw a Roblox game earlier. So, you, you know, whoever made that, they can actually just share it and like anyone in the world can play it. And that's just such a cool thing. All right. So I think we have a poll for everyone, not just in my little classroom, but, you know, also I'm, I'm my little classroom. Who actually wants to learn how to make these big 3D experiences or a little 3D experiences? All of you guys? Maybe you never thought about it. Maybe you like games and they're like, I don't know. Maybe I can't. Maybe that's not me. But you guys all want to make games. Okay, we're going to give the poll just a second. And I hope, you know, maybe if right now you are thinking like, well, I don't know, maybe I want to be something different. You can, oh, well, lots, okay, 93% of you want to make games. That's really cool. And a couple of you guys have never thought about it. And some of you are like, I don't, you know, maybe, maybe. But even for you guys who said, I want to be something else, what's really cool is if you understand game development and if you understand coding, then you can share a lot of that world with you, with it as well, or with people. All right. So the next question I want to ask is like, why? Why do you want to make games? Why, you know, why do people make games? Let's see, anyone in my classroom gonna have an answer? Manav, I haven't heard from you yet. Or Ria, do you have an, another answer? It looks like you're trying to unmute, so. Nope, all right. So I wanna talk about the few different reasons why like I, I meet people. And like I so said, right now, 56% of you guys answered, like you wanna make games to make other people happy. I think that's the most common answer I ever get. Like people wanna share joy with the world. They wanna share the things that make them happy. And that could be just about anything in the world. So people who are like, I really love animals can share their love of animals. They could be, I really like sports and they can make a sports world. Um, or they're like, I really like this, you know, storytelling. And I just want to create a big immersive place where I can hang out with my friends. And it's not like a game the way that other people think of games. Like it doesn't have a, a, a beginning or an end. It's some place where you can come and you can explore this particular world or learn something new. All right. What type of games do you guys want to make? I want to know more about that. So in my classroom. Okay, my hair, what, what kind of game do you want to make? Go ahead and answer. I would like I would like to make a game um, that will help make the earth um, healthy. So like it will reduce the trash amount on earth and it will save creatures' lives so that they don't die due to plastic waste or any other kind of waste. And um to, and then tell them to put them in recycling bills, bins and so and so just perfect. throwing it on the ground. That's beautiful. And that actually uh, that goes really well for my next question. But I'm going to first go, Ria, you get your hand up. Oops, sorry. Right now, I'm just like, yeah. Um, yeah. So I think since a lot of kids have like, um, they think like, school is boring and stuff I think probably like a game that would be educational but kind of more of a game so it's kind of like fun for them to learn and it's not seen as like boring or something that they have to do yeah all right one last question I'm going to move on uh here you had your hand up so nicely oh, you're muted You got it. Come on. Oh no. You can type it. In, you can type your answer in chat if you can't figure out how to get off mute. And then we'll take a look at your answer in chat so you can okay. share it with us. Oh, yeah. there you are. I want to make a game that is like a parkour game. It's really fun. Okay. That's yeah. So we have some great answers. You want to teach people things. 
you want to share things, you want to like have fun. All right. So what type of skills or what type of people have, you know, have to, you, do you have to have together to make games? Like who makes games? Children or other programmers? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else have a good answer? Like Sadia, do you have an answer for who, like what types of people make games? Coders. Coders. Yep. Parth, what do you have? Yes, of being very good about meeting and things. Uh, so I think that game developers and people who are in the gaming background, they uh, can make games. Yeah, so lots of different types of people come together. So you'll have artists who are making all of the different like items you see in the world. You'll have coders who are making things happen. They're the ones that like make the game to come to life. You have musicians who control what the game like sounds like. Have you ever played like a game without music and you're like, eh? And you play it like you play a scary game with music and you start feeling really tense or you, you you like go to a world and it's just like a peaceful forest and it's got peaceful music and that makes you feel really peaceful. So there's all these different parts um, of a game and of 3D worlds that come together to make it and it takes lots of different people. You know, some people do make worlds all by themselves, but I think as you want to get better and you want to make these more elaborate like giant 3D universes, then typically you're going to want to team up with your friends. All right, so last thing I want to ask before we do our demo is who, who, can, who can tell me what code is? Like, what does code do? All right. So code is what, make everything, uh, what makes everything run. So you add all your design and then to make the game actually run and function, you have to add code such as moving around or picking things up. So all of those functions that you wanna add in your game, uh, you have to use code to do that. Perfect, that's like exactly, obviously you have used code before. Um, Manav, it looks like you had your hand up on that as well. Do you wanna talk about like, what is code? Yeah, every, uh, people used to use code to design creative things like uh, games, apps, and all. And they can even really solve problems that are uh, caused. Okay, and Sadia? To make uh, apps, uh, like the programmers use coding to make apps, build websites, and games. Perfect, yeah. So you guys are all very knowledgeable about what code is. A lot of people think that you have to be like super, super smart to code or really, really good at math or that it's boring. And the truth is really anyone can code. Anyone um, can come in and make things. And really coding is about making things come to life. It's about being really creative. So the more that you know how to code, the more you can, you can make things and you can make things that people have never seen before. All right. So I'm going to show you guys now a little bit about what I do to make games. Have you seen Roblox Studio? You guys all made games? Yes. Yeah. I cool. made a yes. little game. I all right. Well, we have a lot of people in the audience who have never made games before or their parents are here. So I'm going to show them a little bit about how I make games and how I make 3D worlds and then um, a little bit of code. So let's see. I'm going to show you guys back here. So oh, I'm just going to actually, so here, this is a bunch of different instances of Roblox Studio. So these are some of the worlds that I've worked on or um, some of my friends have worked on. So like this is one you guys might be familiar with. So me and a team of just like a couple other people, really, we worked on this together all at the same time. Uh, you know, and we had an artist who made us the assets. We had our friend Laker who helped like make the code, uh, you know, and then I actually got to build the environment and everything like that. So that's one type of game. So we have another one, or this, this is a library. So I kind of want to show you guys, like there's lots of different, you know, worlds that you can build. So this is a nice quiet library you can come in. And then this is kind of like where I think a lot of people start is like, you guys know what this is called? Want to tell me what, like, what type of game is this? Obby. Yeah, it's an obby. So a lot of times, this is the first world a person will make. This is actually my very, very first Roblox world that I ever made. Like, this is it. It's not very impressive. 
every single person in this phone call or on Zoom here can make this. You guys can do better than this. Like you, your games, like you guys are looking alike. I'm not impressed. This is, yeah. You know, was your game better than this? I think you know, so. My first game was also hobby. Yeah. So it's a great place to start because you can kind of just learn about working with 3D shapes. You learn how to work in a 3D world. And that's something that lots of different programs have you do. Like maybe if you want to be an architect, you got to start looking about, you know, working in 3D space or if you want to make movies or something like that or be an animator. Um, but this is a very common place for people to start. And I'm actually going to show a little bit about how that's done. So give me a second. So I'm actually going to make a new world. So all of the places we just saw, they all start looking like pretty much like this, like, you know, big blue world. Is this how you guys started off? Just like, you know, and it's just like a big blank canvas for whatever you can imagine. So if I want to make an obby, which is the game that we just saw, that sort of platformer. So the first thing I'm going to do so I can have a great big empty world is I'm going to delete this base plate. I'm going to go pretty quickly. So I just want to give you guys an idea of how the tools work for those who have never seen it before. And I want to show you guys that really, like I said, anyone who is on this call right now who is attending and watching this, you guys can definitely make Roblox games 100%. And the people, you know, here can teach you how. So I'm going to make a part. It's going to show up right in the center of my camera. So what's something that you have to think about? Like as I'm making a 3D world and I'm making Are my... you presenting? Am I presenting? Uh, yeah. Oh, I, this, this thought, the share stop. It says I'm sharing. Yeah, you are presenting. Okay, good. Maybe you have to switch views. But that's a good question. If I hadn't been presenting this whole time and you guys are like, it's been nice looking at your face. I, I appreciate it. You should definitely tell me if I stop presenting and I'm showing, I'm talking like I'm showing something. But all right, so I've got this block. I want you guys to tell me a little bit about the considerations, like as, you know, let's pretend like this is the game that you're making up. What kind of choices do you have to make here? Like, what are you thinking about? Like to make a good obby, should I make this jump really, really hard? Uh, first, you have to make it easy. Then when you go level wise, it should be harder. Yeah, exactly. So you're like, all right. And that's something that sometimes people don't understand. You're like, you're just putting shapes down. It's like, well, you have to make a lot of decisions. Um, and you have to think about the user, just like any other app or game that you're making. You have to think about like, is this too hard? Is this too easy? And you have to think about, are they having fun? We said earlier, we want people to come and have fun in our worlds. So if I make this, this really, really hard, what's gonna happen? No one's gonna have fun. No one's going to have fun. No one's going to play. Um, so really good designers. It doesn't matter if you're making a game or if you're making a beautiful 3D space or if you're recreating history or teaching them. You have to make sure that, you know, you don't start off too hard because then you get really, really frustrated and you just, you know, you don't keep going. You know, you don't think like, oh, I want to play this. You just move you on to something start else. from easy and then uh, gradually uh, grow the difficulty level. Yeah, and to show you guys like how easy this is to get going, I can actually test my world right now. I've not made any code, um, but I can see like, oh my gosh. What do you think those parts are? Does that look easy to you guys? Oh, I think I made it, but. <laughs> yeah, I kind of look I think I should, I'm gonna, I think I should fix it. I think I, they need to be a little bit closer. And this is what's called the design process. So if I was an engineer making a piece of software or even like you know, as a game developer making games or making 3D worlds, this is where I make something, I test it, and then I'm gonna go and you know make some changes because I decided it was a little too hard for a first time player. Um, let's see if that's better. Okay, that's a lot better for the beginning. Like I think just about anybody can make that compared to the last one, All right? So I'm pretty happy with that. That's called the design process, where you make something, you test it, you should probably get other people to test it, and then you make changes, and you kind of keep doing that. So as I'm in here, I can keep playing with the color, I can make things different colors, I can change um, what things look like. 
And I'm actually probably one of my favorite things to do is to work with the terrain. Have you guys ever made terrain and worked with terrain? This is my very favorite thing yes. to do. So I can pick out if I want to use water or dunes or canyons, and I can generate that. You can see, like, I love watching the world come in. So this is a 3D generated world. All my parts just got covered up, but that's not a big deal. I'm going to move them. As soon as they're done, I'll move them. I can delete it if I want, or I can decide I liked it. A lot of times what I'll do if I'm working with a world is I'll start on something like this, and then I'll start making changes to it. So I can work with the, um, the tools like the edit button. Do you guys know how I would make changes? Can anyone tell me which button I should click? It's kind of small. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna use, I can use the paint button. And then that actually gives me choices as to like how I want this world to look. So if I want this to be snowy, I can cover it all in snow. I can cover the mountains in snow. If I want there to be water, I can pick the water button. And now I have water. I can add terrain. I can make new mountains if I want to. So I've got new hills. And I can test this out too. My world. So now I can go swimming in it. And I have a brand new world. All right. So let's say that I'm making an obby. And I'm going to show you guys something. So right now, before, if I didn't make it, what happened? My character had a reset, right? What's going to happen now? If I fall down, I'm nice and safe. But I don't really want that to be nice and safe. So this is where I can start using code. So I've got this cool looking world. I really like it. But I want some more things to happen. I want to change how it behaves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this part right now. I'm going to make a quick little script that whenever I touch this part, it's going to, it's going to destroy whatever it touches. Have you guys worked with code before? Have you worked with Lua? A little bit. So this is the coding language Lua. And I like doing this in front of people because I'm not really good at typing and I'm really bad at typing while I talk. But what I like showing people is that it doesn't matter how long you've been doing this. And I've been doing this a long time. Sometimes you make mistakes in code. So we'll see. Maybe I'll get it right on the first time. Maybe I'll make mistakes. But the first thing I want to do is going to create a variable. And I'm going to go kind of fast. Don't worry about it if you like don't understand all of it. Really, I just want to show you how quickly you can make a big change to the world. And then later, if that looks really interesting, you can come in and then like actually learn how to code on your own. And then you can learn what all these words mean. Or if you've used a different programming language, like let's say you use Java or you use Python or even Scratch, you'll have a better idea what all, what all these words mean. Let's see, so I'm gonna go local. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Yeah, is that a JavaScript or any other Python? So you know, this, this looks a lot like Python. Um, it's actually called Lua. So it's a totally different language and I really like it because it's not okay. a lot of typing. Did uh, Roblox make make this script, like the language? So we didn't. So this is actually a, a language that existed before Roblox, but we picked it because we really wanted young people to come in and be able to make their own games. So this is a good question. And we picked it because it's really easy to read compared to a lot of programming languages, and there's way less typing. So the first thing I did is make a variable. And I assigned it like in most programming languages that would take a lot more type typing, but here it doesn't take so long, which makes it easy for me to actually um, show to you guys. So what I'm going to do is I made a variable up there oops, that's going to destroy called part. So I'm going to destroy the part. So whatever something touches that part, I want them to be destroyed, whether that's a person's feet or if that's something else. So now we're going to go part. There's, a, there's a, a concept called events. Have you guys ever used events with like, yeah. So there's events in Roblox too, just like there are in other coding languages. 
or the R with scratch. Um, events are basically like a signal that fires to let me know that something happens. And see, look, I had a typo right there, but it's cool. My friend here, the, the um, compiler helped me out and fixed it. And I'm gonna connect my function to run. So like, this is a tiny, 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 tiny little script. But what's really, really cool is even with just this much code, something I can completely change how this world behaves. So right now this world is, this is blue. That would look really, really weird in the obby. So I'm gonna actually make it transparent and make it actually, so you can just barely see it just for our purposes for testing. And hopefully I put it underneath. All right, can I see my blue block? I don't know, I think it's here. Oops, it wasn't underneath me after all. What I really like showing, oops, see, yeah. See, this is what, when you work in 3D worlds, you always have to be looking at things from multiple angles. And this is why I like showing my mistakes because people tend to think like, oh, I made a mistake. I'm not very good. I'm never gonna be an engineer. And it's like, everyone makes mistakes. Everyone will keep making both like new mistakes. I make new mistakes I've never made, you know, in new code all the time, but I make mistake in code I've, I've done before all the time. I'm also going to anchor this in place so it doesn't move. So let's let's see if I if this works now. How many mistakes did you guys make when you first started? And if you guys never make mistakes, you guys made so many mistakes, right? So well, yes. uh, like when I first started coding, I made a lot of mistakes. Sometimes I felt like giving up, but later on, I just literally, you know, just say to myself that everything has a pay, like every single to like literally to gain success, we need to like go through many failures. Yeah. So what I did, and I said, I've, I've typed this exact piece of code literally hundreds of times, but I made a mistake. And I'm like, all right, it's not working. So I came back to look at my code and what I saw is I destroyed the wrong thing. I was actually destroying the part that was the, you know, that was resetting instead of the, whatever touches it. Oops, I was just moving it so I can touch it. Sometimes it'll do some move things so I can touch it, but now I can't reach it. I'm gonna stop one more time. I'm, really, I'm so glad I'm like making all these mistakes now. Like yesterday I was working and I like, it's like, oh, it all looks so perfect and easy. And I'm like, so I would test. That's a good place to test. So what should happen actually probably is I'm gonna land on this and my feet are gonna disappear. And I like showing that because, yep, there we go. So I land on this block and it destroys whatever it touches, but because it's code, it'll only does exactly what I tell it to. So it only destroyed my feet because only my feet are touching. So I can change one more thing about this block. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off this can collide. And what's not gonna happen now is um, I'm gonna pass right through the block. And as I do, everything's gonna get destroyed. <laughs> See? So that's something I like showing because it shows you like how quickly like this world can change with just a little bit of code. So you can make so much stuff happen. Um, so you can have like, the game that we saw earlier where there's like those cool like blocks you had to pull like uh jump over and you know you have like the checkerboards so you can create all kinds of patterns and all kinds of things that you you, you want all right so i know like we were we started a little bit late um i think that's i just had a couple more questions for you guys so i think we're on time yeah we are okay thank you <laughs> uh so i'm just have a couple more questions for my little classroom So this is the bit of code that I just showed you guys. So this is a really simple code. If I wanted to make sure that I destroyed like the entirety of the humanoid, what I would do is I would actually have to add a little bit more code to make sure that I got not just the part that touches, but like everything so that that belongs to the person. So you can do that with more code. And that's sort of an example of, you can start off with really simple code that does one specific thing, but as you get better, you can make better code that can take care of more situations and that, you know, well, instead of just destroying your feet, we'll destroy like, like anything that belongs to the feet, including the whole entire player. All right. So I, earlier you guys started answering this question. I was like, I don't know, this is a question I was going to ask, you know, here, but how, how can we help the world by making 3D worlds? 
I think you can make like 3D games to share awareness of things. Like for example, you can make a 3D game uh, talking about pollution mm -hmm. or other or global warming. Um, so that it's a fun and interactive game that people will play more. And the more people play it, the more they'll learn about worldwide problems. Yeah, that's an excellent question. Who else is an answer? What, what kind of thing? So we can create some game for children to learn what to do or not. For example, uh, if they do wrong things in the game, uh, they will uh, lose some points or uh, something like that. And if they do good things, they will gain some points. Nice. Let's see. More answers. How, how can we make a better place? What about like literature? Can you learn how to like read and write with, you know, on Roblox? Yeah, we can make a game from we can learn coding. Uh huh. Absolutely. People do that. They learn coding on Roblox, you know, through games. All right. So if you were to make any game right now, what game would you make to make the world a better place? We heard about like a, a pollution game where similarly to what someone said that if you help like in the game if you clean up pollution you get points uh -huh. and if you do pollution uh you lose points and also there's text in the game that shows as you're playing what is uh, good about pollution and what's um i mean like what you can do the um help pick up pollution and stop it so that it's a fun learning experience and people can learn more all right um go ahead one more thing uh i would like to make a game that when it will tell you task show you task and when we do it they give us money or in real life well some what some worlds do some experiences the the, the task uh yeah or you know it's cool it's you can actually make this actually is a good thing for the next slide so how how does making all of these 3d experiences prepare you for the future even if you're not going to become a game developer um but if you are going to become a, a developer on roblox then what's really cool is that the people on there who make really really good games are the ones that people spend a lot of time in you can actually earn real money so you earn Robux and then those can be converted to actually real money. So we've had people who have put themselves through college, like by making worlds on Roblox. We've had people who have bought their parents' houses. Um, or a lot of times like, you know, they'll actually have enough that they can start helping other people go through college. There's one developer on Roblox who did just that. He came from a background where he like had a hard time, you know, affording college. So he made enough money that he started offering grants and offering loans to other people so they could go to college. But, all right, so that's like, you know, so you can actually make a career with game development, but it's really, really cool is like all these skills that you've just learned, like you're talking about um, not being afraid of mistakes. Like if you make mistakes, you know, and, you know, are getting over being frustrated and testing things to make sure that they're fun and that they work. Those are actually skills that can apply no matter what you're doing. Like whether you're going to be an engineer who is developing software, like new software that no one's ever seen before, or if you're trying to be a scientist and you wanna figure out like, you know, how a particular virus works or like how some, you know, what's going on with nature or the climate, you're gonna make you know lots of theories and you're gonna make lots of mistakes and it can be really easy to get frustrated. But I think when going through this, you just learn that mistakes are part of the process. I made, how many mistakes did I make today? I made a lot of mistakes, but that doesn't mean I'm bad. And that doesn't mean that you're bad. It means that, you know, I just need to do it again. And that's a really important skill to have no matter what you're gonna, what you're gonna be. And the other thing is like, if you're gonna be a game developer, if you wanna you know, get hired by other people or you wanna run your own company, by starting now, you'll actually have a portfolio. You'll have things that you can show to colleges and to show to potential employers in the future where the, you can show like, hey, I've already done all of this. So anything that I, how do you guys feel about that? You know, how do you think it prepares you for your future? I think it's a great idea and a great career. Uh, uh, such as, uh, for example, a person has to find a job and he finds it. 
and mm -hmm. he does not know what to do exactly in this job. We can create an app to explain him what is his role and what he has to do. Yeah, that's a great answer. All right. So I think that's the end of my presentation. Oh. Sure. Uh, Genevieve, thank you so much. This was so informative. Uh, I'm just going to switch on my camera. I hope you can see me. Sure, so we just sure. have, <laughs> perfect. Yes, thank you. We just have one question for you, uh, just mindful of the time uh, which mm -hmm. people had. Okay, so the one question that our students want to know, the answer that our students really want to know is, what is the best way to leverage the customized Roblox templates that we've curated for them? So I say go in and take them and figure out how they work. So if you're looking at something, you can take a look at the scripts. So um, you can actually like actually see like you know how things were made. You can also go ahead and like change things. So you can change it slightly. So you can make it look like your world. You can bring in new things. You can change. You can change it from daytime to like nighttime. You can also like take things like um, the template that, you know, you guys are working on right now, it's got like these particles. So you can actually bring in your own particle effects. You can make it look exactly like yours. You can even draw particle effects if you really, really wanted to take it even farther. So what's cool is that you can take something that exists and you can start making little changes and that'll teach you how to work in a larger world. And you can keep changing more and more about it as you become comfortable so I would say just keep keep making it your own. So take it, learn from it, and then change you know everything about it. Swap out the houses, make it look different. The more that it looks different, like the better you're gonna feel about it. Wow! So make it different. Awesome, uh, beautiful answers. I think there's just one last question coming in from the parents, so we'll take that. And that question is that. You know, parents are really worried about the kids hooked on to their screens most of the time. Can you focus on the key skills that children learn while they are playing games, particularly for the parents? Yeah, so even while playing, there's a lot of things that they're learning about communication that might not be immediately obvious. Like in order to like play, you've got to be able to communicate like what you're doing. You get like a lot of times they're talking about um, like what's going on. And so these like teamwork skills like have a direct translation to working in the workplace as you're like trying to communicate, I'm taking care of this part or you're taking care of that part, as well as like teaching your critical thinking. So, you know, there's lots of different ways to learn and to play, you know, and to have fun as you're learning. And you can be, you can be using those skills to solve problems, to solve puzzles, to um, improve your language skills. And they've shown actually through studies that these things do happen as children are taking on the roles um, or whatever it may be within these 3D worlds. You know, there's even, there's worlds on Roblox where people are taking on the roles of different like NASA engineers and scientists and astronauts and different, you know, people will be in the launch bay and other people are up in the shuttle and they're talking to each other. So like this role playing is actually a really important part of development for, for young people. Perfect. So thank you so much, Genevieve, for from the audience. This was such a fantastic and insightful session. Mm -hmm. Have a fantastic uh, day ahead. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Perfect. Okay, so people, uh, you know, if you love the session, especially those who are watching on YouTube right now, please show us love in the comments and you can also join the session by clicking on the link in the description because we do have a lot of interesting sessions coming our way okay now before we really move to the next session we have three gaming quiz questions for you so keep your eyes on for the poll section so can we have the questions please Okay, we have the first question already. Okay, 71% feel it's PlayStation 4, Xbox 360 is catching up as well. Amazing. Okay, 30 more seconds to go. Okay, so PlayStation 4, let's see the answers.
Okay, and the answer is PlayStation 2. Okay, let's have the next question. I hope a lot of you got it right. The name of the spherical object used to collect Pokemon. Wow. Seems everybody knows the answer to this. Okay, can we get the results? Romal, can we see the answers to this? Okay, perfect, let's move on. Question three, excitement building up, I'm sure. Let's see how many of you get this right. I would have failed all three for sure. Minecraft, I'm told it's a favorite of many now. Okay, there is somebody saying that they're not able to vote. I'm sure we're trying to fix that. Okay, so we have the answers. I'm sure you really enjoyed this as much as I did. It was fun and we will connect with the winners after the event. So moving on to our next segment. Can we stop sharing the screen now, please? Okay, so the next segment is for the curious minds. Okay, and we know that young minds are curious, they are creative, and they look at the world through a very different lens. So these people make these innovative ideas a possibility, and these ideas are super refreshing. This is the session to celebrate these young visionaries. So congratulations to all the students who pitched in their ideas, and we really have very tough rounds of rigorous selection process, Every idea was so super good, but yes, we do have six mind boggling ideas that have made it to the top. So do you want to see uh, these ideas? Let's see the AV, please. Wasn't that fantastic? So with that, we have our 
Young Visionary is here. Can I get Sadia in spotlight, please? Hey, Sadia, it was such an amazing thing to look at, you know, what you've done. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit about it? Uh, yes, I would like to. So should I share my screen? Please go ahead. Thank you. I hope you all can see. Yep. Hello, everyone. My name is Sadia Zahan Nakiba. I'm a student of Grace 6 from Scholastica, Bangladesh. Also, I'm a coder from Wahai Junior. Today, it's my pleasure to present my idea named Blind People. There are many blind people on this planet. The major problem that these people face is the time when they are alone. I'll tell you a story which I witnessed along with my mom. One day, I went to a grocery store where I saw a blind man buying a shampoo bottle. While doing so, he asked the shopkeeper, how much does it cost? The shopkeeper answered, it cost 130 taka. In response, the blind man took out a note from his pocket, which was a note of 500 taka. He asked the shopkeeper about the value of the note since he was not aware. The shopkeeper cunningly said it was just a hundred taka note. As I was watching the entire event, I asked my mom to do something about it. My mom immediately stopped the shopkeeper cheating on the blind man. This is not just a story of one blind person, but so many of those who cannot understand the amount they're paying, the products they're buying, or the color of clothes they're wearing. Sometimes these people end up buying things which they really don't want. So, in help in, so to help in making these blind people's life easier, I want to make an app which will be dependent on voice command so that the blind people can talk and control the app. This app will have three options. First option will be a money reader. It will tell you the value of the note when you will click a picture of it. Second option will be an object reader. It will tell the name of the object when you will click a picture of that. At last, we will have a color reader. This will tell the, when you click a picture of anything, it will tell you the color of the same. I'm sure this app will add colors to the lives of blind people. Before ending my speech, I would like to thank my teacher, Tinka Alone, who has helped me all this while to become a good programmer and to uh, implement my idea. Thank you very much. Wow, Sadia, such a beautiful idea. I wonder why it never occurred to any of us before. I mean, such a wonderful idea. So uh, you really enjoy building apps, right? Anything that you want to give as a message to the audience uh, who are watching you? Yes, of course. I'd like to, love to give an advice that never, ever give up. Like, you know, to become successful in life, you need to actually face many troubles. You need to, like, you will fail a lot of time, but never let your failure stop from your dream. So, yeah. So one day my dream is to become a very good programmer, and I hope one day I will become a good programmer. I am sure all the best wishes are coming your way and you will with that confidence, you definitely will. So ladies and gentlemen, that was Sadia. So with that, we come to our next visionary. I'm sure you're actually enjoying this a lot. We have Mahir Khan here with us. Uh, he is, uh, he's won in the flat race and scaling competitions as well. And his vision, sorry, her vision is to code an app so that the passport will become an e-passport and she'll tell you more about it. Yes. Yeah, Mahir, sorry. Should yes, I share my screen? Please go ahead. Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Mahir Khan. I'm from Hyderabad, India, and I study in sixth grade at Glendale Academy International. I'm 10 years old and a learner at White Hat Junior. I'm glad to present my idea named ePassport app that will help in making passports handy for all of us at any point of time. Have you been in this situation where it was difficult for you to find your passport, renew your passport, or keep it handy with you while moving to places? Also, you must have seen or heard about the scenarios where people lose their passports because of the reason that, uh, because of some 
calamity disaster or other problems you know losing a passport is not less than a huge amount of money sometimes it can even cause major problems because of the reason that you cannot travel when you lose your passport or if it gets expired it takes a long time to get a new hard copy of it of the same so i thought about making an e passport app through which we can have our passports online and really easy to renew it without even wasting time have an e passport will also get rid of stress that is caused due to having a hard copy of it if everything including money can be used online then why not such an important entity like a passport i'm sure this app is going to help in major development across the globe i would really like to thank my teacher uh, ms sirisha kv and uh, thank you so much stay safe perfect unfortunately we know your teacher couldn't make it tonight but you make us so proud mahir and you know your idea is brilliant especially for all the travelers we've all had those moments okay so mahir you're a olympia champion right uh, what all do you do i mean at such a young age what makes you do so many things my friend um i watch uh, educational videos on youtube wow and anything other than studying and watching videos that you really enjoy uh playing tennis playing tennis wow so that's mahir khan an all rounder for us mahir what's your message to the audience um keep thinking keep innovations. thinking innovations and uh, uh watch uh, like uh, educational videos okay brilliant that was mahir khan thank you so much mahir we just loved this interaction okay with that we have our next young visionary riya and her teacher chandana riya is a music enthusiast who's working on an app using react native which uses a system of kids making requests and people volunteering to help them with their homework by getting the email or requesting info so riya has a lot of interesting things to talk about herself as well so riya welcome hi Yeah, can you tell us where you're from? Um, I'm. I was orig. So I am. I'm Indian, but um, I, I think about six months ago, I moved from um California in the U.S. to the U.K. in London. Okay, enjoying moving from one country to the other. Yeah, it's been a really good experience so far. Awesome! Great. So, Ria, let's hear it from you. on what you have to present to the audience okay wait yep yep ready uh yeah okay go ahead Hi, my name is Ria Kutsa and I'm 13 years old. I am in year 8 at the Sylvia Young Theatre School in London and a student at White Hat Junior. Just recently, I discovered that many kids share a common issue. Have you ever needed help with your schoolwork? Some kids have someone to help, like their parents, siblings, or for the very fortunate, an expensive tutor. Unfortunately, according to UNESCO, there are 267 million kids who don't have this privilege and whose parents are too busy working or don't have the money for a tutor. I used to wait for my dad to get home from work to help me. He would get home at my bedtime. Also, the way some subjects are taught today are quite different than in the dark ages or when my parents were born. My dad was practically pulling his hair out trying to teach me the new common core math. Sadly, he's almost bald now, but that's a different story. Anyways, all this got me thinking. What if I created a platform where kids could find a tutor for free? It gives me immense pleasure to present my idea, Study Shack, a new platform that will democratize education by giving all kids, irrespective of their financial or family situations, access to great tutors for free. It turns out there are a lot of people who are passionate about helping children learn. Imagine if a kid could request study help in math, English, or science from a friendly tutor who is volunteering their time to make a difference in a student's life. 
The platform will have a volunteer system. So these tutors will teach from not only the textbook, but from the heart as well. And maybe after a student becomes very good at a subject, that student can pay it forward by volunteering to be a tutor to a younger student. So the amazing gift of an education comes around in a full circle. And maybe one day you'll ask someone to sign up to be a tutor at Study Shack and help one of 267 million children. All kids really need is a little help, hope, and someone who believes in them. So pay it forward. Thank you to my amazing White Hat Junior coding teacher, Chandana, for helping me develop my app. And thank you for my dad for always encouraging me. But most importantly, thank you all so much for your time. Wow, Ria, that was just amazing. And what a wonderful idea. And a big thank you to Ria's father as well. I hope you're uh, listening to the conversation. And we have uh, her teacher, Chandana, here with us today. So, Chandana, are you on? Yes, uh, thank you oh, so brilliant. much. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Yes, uh, Ms. Kulva. So, thank you so much, uh, Ria. So, like, I'm very happy. Like, I don't know what to say. So, in this young age and with the young mind, so, Ria's concepts are so huge. It is impacting the entire world. So, I think everyone should think like Ria. She has, like, uh, like I feel she is a mother, Theresa, because uh, she always wants people to learn something. And also, she is, uh, she always wants everyone to go as a vegan, vegetarian, <laughs> and she don't want to, uh, like, uh, <laughs> cut any wheels or do something like that. So, Ria is so sweet and punctual, <laughs> also smart. <Wow. laughs> Very Let me ask you a trick question. You know, how is she when it comes to doing her homework? You know, her app is all about all the homework. Let's hear it from you on that also. So, so basically, yes, definitely she needs some help to do that. And But on time, everything will be submitted. I'm so happy. So I will not be, I never was behind Ria to uh, say her, okay, submit the thoughts, submit the thoughts. No, okay. she used to do on time. So I was very happy for that. And uh, she's a hard worker. Like uh, every time, like uh, if I ask her to do something like, yeah, I'll sh she'll be like, yeah, okay. And then immediately that work will be done. Okay. <laughs> so Great. She is very passionate about her uh, work and everything. So I am very proud <laughs> to be her teacher. <laughs> hey, so Ria, yeah, you make all of us proud. Thank you so much, uh, Chandana, for encouraging words for Ria. I'm sure, you know, this is beautiful. Okay, so with that, we will move to our next young visionary right uh, again a very special uh, you know i am just reading the kind of list of things that he does okay so he's won chess tournaments he's an avid football lover through the power of technology he wants to automate many everyday tasks that are very difficult for humans to do manually. So ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Parth and his teacher, Tamanna. So Parth, over to you. Hello, everyone. Uh, let me present my screen. Okay, so are you able to see this? Yes, we can. Okay, so I will go ahead and start. So. Hello everyone, my name is Part Singh and I live in the US. I study in fifth grade in Highcroft Drive Elementary School and I am a White Hat Junior coder. It gives me immense pleasure to present my idea named Technology Train in front of you. I would like to focus on everyday task problems where it becomes extremely difficult for humans to lift heavy objects, heavy machinery, and heavy loads wherever needed. Many jobs are only dependent on lifting these loads. And even if there are machines available to help in doing so, it still needs manual work or human resources to perform the job. I would like to give you an example when it comes to our real life problem. Suppose you are traveling and you get stuck in the middle of the road where nobody is around. You have heavy objects with you, which you need to carry, such as your travel bags and other items. When there is nobody to help you, it will become extremely difficult for you to come out of this situation because the machines that lift heavy loads are not accessible to you. Although these everyday tasks are difficult to solve on your own, technology can help you solve these problems. Hence, I decided to build an app along with the gadget which is easy to handle, easy to carry, and will help you lift heavy loads without any manual effort. This app can be installed on your phone and will have access to voice commands. As soon as you place the command to lift an object, the app will automatically instruct the gadget to perform the task. 
The gadget will be more or less like a mini robot, which would be easy to carry and will be equipped with artificial intelligence. The app will be connected to this gadget and will help us to perform our everyday tasks effectively. Imagine a world where nobody will be dependent on heavy machines and manual work to lift their loads. Lifting your heavy loads in this world can all be possible using technology training. I would like to thank my Whitehead Junior teacher, Ms. Tamanna Singh, for all the work she has put in to make sure that I have become a great coder. I have extreme gratitude towards her, and I'm thankful for everything she has taught me. Thank you. Oh, wow. This was simply so amazing. And we have your teacher also here with us today. So is Tamanna on? Uh, yes, I'm on here. Okay, great. So Tamanna, Parth has been you know, talking about such great ideas. How do you think he's in classes? Uh, can you just share something about him, which a lot of others won't know? Uh, yes, please. So he has always been brilliant. So he signed up for the advanced classes, but you know, he was in grade five, but he was already doing grade nine mathematics. So I quickly upgraded him to professional course and he's brilliant, he's curious, and he wants to learn about all the things that we can teach and he's always on. And by on, I mean, he keeps on asking questions and he never rests. And he loves creating games and he was always asking me all these questions about coding and uh, python even though we were doing javascript but he was interested in other coding languages as well and uh, i this is just my honor to teach him and he is he was one of my star students top three for, for sure wow okay great so parth i'm sure you're beaming with joy with all the great comments coming your way so parth that was fantastic tamana thank you so much for connecting with us and with that we have you know we we quickly have a few quizzes for the audience so let's uh, just start the quiz please okay audience this is your opportunity to get the right answers Okay, and let's see the results. Wow. Okay, so a lot of you have got it right. Parth, you're still on. Did you get it right as well? Yes, I did. Okay, great. Okay, with that, do we have another quiz question? Okay, this is the last one for now. No books. FIFA 21. Great. Let's get the answers. I tell you. Thailand me be pe. Killian wala Killian. Okay, so can um, Zayed go on mute? Yeah. So I, I hope a lot of you got this right as well. Okay, so thank you so much for participating and I'm sure you're enjoying this. So ladies and gentlemen, are we ready for the next segment? We're just going to, uh, you know, come with the session that is the most awaited session for today. So are we ready? Can we stop sharing the screen, please? Okay, so now it's the time for our serial entrepreneur, Dan Vitanoff, an MBA from Stanford and currently serving as the chief marketing officer at instant gaming startup Playco, uh, who was also the CEO and co-founder of uh, Chobo Labs, a mobile e-sports startup. Uh, he's founded many, many companies and, you know, we are so, so uh, proud to have you here, uh, Dian. So welcome. And, uh, you know, we are really, really looking forward to your session. Thank you, Parva, for uh, the kind introduction. Let me go ahead and just share my screen 
and I hope you all can see that screen as well as hear me okay. Wonderful. Yes, we can. Uh, all right. Well, first off, thank you once again. And it's a real privilege to be here with all of you today. Uh, I thought I would kick things off by introducing myself since we don't really know each other. And then I'd love to share with you all uh, kind of my thoughts and my biggest passion with being gaming. But first things first, uh, as I said, my name is Dejan and I am originally from Bulgaria where I grew up and went to high school. I specialized in mathematics and informatics. Afterwards, I went to Germany where I got my bachelor degree at Jakobs University Bremen. And finally, in 2007, I arrived here in the San Francisco Bay Area, where I enrolled at Stanford to get my master's in business administration. What attracted me to the San Francisco Bay Area was entrepreneurship. And indeed, that's what my career has been all about. I've had the good fortune to build three different companies. The first one was called CPP Home, and I started that while still in Bulgaria. To be quite honest with you, I didn't really know what starting a company meant. Uh, it wasn't even my idea. At the time, I was programming quite a bit, and a friend said, hey, do you, I have this idea. Do you want to join me? Do you want to give it a shot? And next thing you know, uh, the, the company grew, and we even got acquired a couple of years later. Once I moved here to Silicon Valley, I wanted to do more, bigger, better. And that's why I started Philanthropedia right after graduate school. And a few years later, I started Chobolabs, which is a mobile electronic sports startup that got acquired by Playco a couple of years ago. For those of you who don't know much about Playco, I just wanted to say a couple of words. We are the largest publisher of instant games. What that means is that we partner with social media companies, instant messengers, and similar uh, social media companies, uh, such as Facebook and Snapchat and Line and Viber, and our games are played through there. There is no download. You just click a link, and you're instantaneously transported into the experience. So with that quick background out of the way, I want to move on to the main topic which is my love and passion for gaming. I got introduced to gaming when I was just about the age of some of the others that spoke earlier today. I was nine. My dad came back from home to home one day with a computer. Uh, he never used the computer himself. He just read that computers were going to be the next big thing and decided to buy one for us. Uh, and I was instantly in love. I got an old machine, certainly by any stretch, by, by kind of today's comparison. Uh, it looked exactly like this one on the picture, an Intel 386 running uh, DOS, an ancient programming operating system. Uh, but I was in love nonetheless. And the main reason that I was in love were all the games that I could play. Here are just a small, small fraction of the many games that uh, I was uh, in love with back then. Uh, there, these were the days when a lot of genres were being established. First person shooters such as Doom, Duke Nukem and Quake, fighting games such as Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter, adventure games like Super Mario Bros and Jazz Jack Rabbit. These were all brand new things at the time and they were absolutely enthralling and exciting. Uh, and I think that the main reason that they were so exciting to me is because of how they challenged the brain. One of the best ways to illustrate this is with a game called The Incredible Machine. You can see here on my screen a little video from that game. And what you may notice is that the game is very physical. In other words, you have to actually use things like gravity to get the ball to go down the stairs to hit the lever just right, or maybe the balloon to go up, or the scissors to cut a string, and so forth and so forth. So really, games are a puzzle, a puzzle for the brain. And what makes them exciting is trying to solve that puzzle and, and overcome whatever challenges the coders of the games have created for us. 
Another thing that I found especially exciting, uh, and I think you guys were talking about it just a little while ago, is that games are very, very easy to mod or to modify. What I have here on the left is a screenshot from Duke Nukem 3D, which is a very old game at this point. But what made it exciting was that it was very easy to create new maps for. You could, uh, this is a top-down view of a map. You could very easily take an existing level and, and go ahead and, and create uh, a, a new one uh, by just modifying the sprites. Um, this what made it very exciting because uh, you know I could basically go and do my own experience. And today, uh, that certainly that legacy and that idea certainly continues. You heard earlier today from Roblox, Minecraft is another example. And these just are these are just a couple of examples of games that are very easy to customize, to modify, to build unique experiences with. Um, and and I, I found that uh, uh, so darn exciting. Uh, and I thought we'd pause here for a quick poll. Uh, do you create your own games or modify existing ones? Uh, perhaps you start from scratch, uh, or maybe you, you modify uh, something that already exists, uh, or maybe you haven't tried yet, but are thinking of doing that soon. When you get a chance, please vote. I'd love to see where you guys are at. All right, so almost 60% are creating your own games from scratch. That is very impressive and really quite hard to do. So kudos to you. For those of you who haven't tried yet, but want to, I wanted to let you know to not be afraid. Start small, take something that already exists and just maybe clone it and change one or two or three things. Start small so that you can learn how it works, or maybe go online and watch a YouTube video to learn the basics. This is the beauty of the internet today is anybody can get started. You don't need to know all the things. You can just make one tiny step and then another, and then another. And then next thing you know, you will know so much uh, and you feel much more comfortable to create ever more exciting and advanced experiences. Speaking of exciting and advanced experiences, for me, once I had started modifying games, I found that games were a fantastic getaway to the broader digital world, to computers beyond just playing, beyond just modifying the games, towards creating new things, whether that may, meant creating new games or maybe creating different sorts of programs, websites, apps, and everything else. And you heard earlier with the many wonderful ideas that were shared, but many of you are already thinking about that. Amazing, keep doing it. For me, I started by learning some programming languages. At this point, these programming languages are a little bit old. Things like Pascal and Logo and Assembly and Visual Basic. If you were doing it today, you should definitely focus on more modern ones like TypeScript and JavaScript and React. And I know that all these keywords and these names, they sound so confusing for those of you who don't have experience. But the best thing about all of these cases is that you can get started with very, very small things. You can take an existing project and you can modify it and just make one little step to build a first app, even something as simple as the computer saying, hello, you know what? That's the first step. And then from there, you can make it do and say all sorts of other things. And here I thought I'd take another poll because I'm very curious to learn more. How many of you know programming languages? Are you perhaps experts in multiple ones and already feel quite comfortable despite just how young the audience seems to be? Or maybe you have advanced coding knowledge in you know, one or maybe a couple at most. Or perhaps you're a beginner or don't have coding skills yet. Uh, when you get a chance, and if we can pull up the poll, I'd love to, to have your vote. Thank you for the poll.
All right. So maybe about half of you have some coding knowledge, uh, which is fantastic. You know, keep building on it step by step. For those of you who don't have coding skills yet or are beginners, again, fear not. You can start very simply, whether that's following a tutorial online, an educational video, or maybe just taking an existing game and trying to make it a little bit better, maybe make your life a little bit easier in it. I certainly remember the early days and how confusing and challenging it can be. But once you make a couple of steps, next thing you know, you feel so much more comfortable. The next thing I wanted to share with you is uh, when I discovered uh, uh, competitive gaming or what we now call uh, electronic sports or esports. In the late 90s, early 2000s, when I was growing up, internet, the internet got faster, computers got better, and we had this thing called internet cafes show up for the first time where everybody, even those that didn't have the best computers or internet, could actually join and play games. And that's when competitive gaming started gaining momentum. I personally sp spent four years as a professional gamer. I played StarCraft Brood War, which is a strategy game for two years. And I played Counter-Strike 1.6, which is a first-person shooter game for two years as well. I had a team, we had a sponsor, we spent quite a bit of time training, went to different tournaments, and to be honest, lost quite a few of them. Uh, but we also had the good fortune to win a few too. And this was unforgettable uh, because it was just a, such a social experience. You know, we would play together. Before then, games were mostly played kind of by yourself. And that's very exciting for the brain and for solving puzzles. But once you have other people involved, uh, then it gets to the next level. And, you know, when we started, electronic sports and competitive games were not, uh, were not uh, that uh, big or popular as they are today. This is a picture from an internet cafe. And this is where a lot of the early tournaments were actually take place. You know, you'd kind of come together with your teammates and try to uh, uh, defeat an opponent that is sitting somewhere else in the, in the, in the cafe. Today, esports has truly grown uh, to a major industry that draws many spectators, many sponsors, with tournaments, sometimes even with millions of dollars in, in prizes, which of course is very exciting. Some of these events uh, will take place in person when coronavirus is not uh, such, a, uh, such a terrible thing. Uh, and even you couldn't do that. You could actually take uh, do virtual tournaments. Uh, on places like YouTube and Twitch, where very large crowds uh, gather to watch the best people in a given game compete against one another. And this is such a, an advanced and exciting space that even the cutting edge AI research happens on it. Here you can see a screenshot from AlphaStar, which is a artificial intelligence that is playing StarCraft, arguably the hardest game out there. And it is uh, uh, not only playing it well, it is very uh, commonly defeating some of the top human players. This is a brand new thing that wasn't possible even a couple of years ago. And uh, I think, uh, you know, whether you're interested in playing the games, modifying the games, competing in the games, or just doing advanced research, uh, esports uh, offers all these many, many different options. So I thought before I continue on with esports to just do another quick poll here. How many of you are actually familiar with competitive gaming? Are you perhaps pro gamers, uh, grandmasters or masters in the latter? Or perhaps you have heard a little bit about esports but don't know too much about it. Or maybe some of you are wondering what actually is esports? Uh, please vote. I'd love to. No. All right. Actually, this is a pretty even, uh, even crowd here. Well, for the pro gamers out there, I will see you later. And for those of you who know a little bit less about esports, let me go ahead and share with you what I thought is so exciting and special about them. 
So there are really three things that I thought uh, uh, make, let me just go back here. Three things that made a big impression on me. The first one is quick thinking. Electronic sports are fundamentally about people playing against other people. And that means that they challenge the mind truly like nothing else. In a typical single player game, uh, there's a puzzle to be solved. And once you figure out how the creator of the game set up that puzzle, you can hopefully proceed to win. It can still be very challenging, but the puzzle is finite. With esports, every person is trying to think how to outsmart uh, and outplay their opponent. That means that the puzzle is ever changing. You actually never know. There is no right solution. You have to think on your feet, typically very quickly because those games are played in real time. How do you actually uh, outplay your opponent? And that is truly a special um, a kind of property of competitive games. Another very special property is team play. Uh, to win, you have to be able to come together as a team. Whether you have a professional team that trains together or you create an ad hoc team just by playing online with, with friends or even with strangers, you have to be able to figure out how to actually come together, create a strategy that makes sense, and then execute that strategy to, to prevail. Uh, and that's such a valuable skill uh, to have in life in general. Uh, and electronic sports and competitive gaming exposes you to it with every match. And finally, competition. You know, in life, you often find that you have to compete because everybody's, you know, of course, trying to ever be better. And esports is one of the most uh, kind of best exposures for that. Uh, outplaying your opponents is the ultimate challenge because they're trying to outplay, outsmart, outthink you as well. And whether you're doing a strategy game or a more action packed game, doing that is, is very hard. And for the Pro gamers out there in the audience, you know how difficult it is to be a top 1% or so player in, in any of these competitive games. And for those of you who are perhaps less familiar with esports or maybe just uh, are not familiar at all, you know, the, the, the way that the games are, are, are organized is through rankings. And these rankings kind of reflect just how often you win or you lose against other people. So very similarly to chess, you end up having a ranking that is quite coveted and certainly very, very hard to achieve uh, to, to be one of the top players. So it is those reasons combined that captured my imagination, my attention, uh, and create my excitement for esports, something that I continue to do and to follow even today. When I put it all together, uh, I think, and this, my computer is a bit frozen here. There we go. I think that games are a wonderful introduction to the world of computers, and they teach many valuable skills, whether it's about how you think uh, quickly on your feet, strategically, critically, how to play together with others uh, to achieve something together, in, in, often in real time, or how to participate in a competition, uh, not just uh, you know, to win, but also the inevitable many, many losses uh, as you play these games. Uh, they teach you something about resilience and about never giving up, as somebody said earlier. And I find those skills to be really quite special and quite valuable. I wanted to talk a little bit about careers, uh, just kind of to wrap things up here. But before I did that, I wanted to do another poll. For those of you that have thought about it already, I would love to know what kind of career you're thinking about. Are you thinking perhaps that you want to start a company? Maybe you want to join a young startup? Uh, or perhaps join a big company, or maybe you want to be a teacher or a scientist uh, and go into academia, or maybe it's something else that I just forgot and didn't list. And if you're not sure, that's quite all right too. I'd love to know. Please vote when you can. All right. Wow, this is a very special group because <laughs> nearly half of you actually want to start a company. Well, kudos to you. Starting a company can be incredibly rewarding. And certainly picking up skills related to programming and to critical thinking and, and kind of creating things from scratch, that's a wonderful first step, an opportunity to kind of learn how to do things, uh, which is great. 
for those of you who are more interested in other things, uh, or perhaps you're just not sure, uh, I, I, I wanted to let you know that truly the, the, the world is your oyster. You can do whatever you decide to do. You do not have to start a company. You can join an existing company. You can be a teacher. Uh, you can be a scientist. You can probably go into anything that you put your mind to. The world is truly your oyster. Games can help prepare you for that, again, by developing your thinking, your skill set, your social skills, and so forth. And that's wonderful. But beyond just any given game or any given competition, just kind of picking up skills and learning and, 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 and doing everything that you guys have been doing, which was truly remarkable, I think is the best possible preparation. Um, and you can achieve anything you set your mind to as long as you stick with it. And if you're not sure, I think that's quite all right. Most of us actually aren't sure for, well, most of our lives. Uh, it is hard to find the right thing. And so my advice for you all would be to just try different things. You know, you, you can go and you can kind of passively watch videos about different industries or companies, or you can just try, maybe do an internship, maybe do a small project, maybe work with your teachers to do kind of exciting little uh, research into into these things and and as you learn more what you uh, what perhaps starts with very fuzzy you know not sure what to do the, the answer will start coming to you because experience is the best teacher you will find what you naturally gravitate towards and what you want to do more of and you find what perhaps maybe is exciting but not for you maybe you just don't want to spend your time on it so with that I wanted to thank you so much for having me here it's been a real pleasure to listen to the projects earlier and to be able to talk to you all here today. And of course, I'm happy to uh, go and answer any questions uh, right now. Perfect, Dan, this was fantastic. And we do have questions from the students. They were very excited to submit the questions beforehand. So let me take ask you a couple of questions on their behalf, okay? Sure. So the first question really was, uh, you know, how do you get these ideas and what inspires you to build these games that become such a big, huge success, Dan? Yeah, I think that's a wonderful, wonderful question. And I think that inspiration is the sort of thing that requires that you kind of roll up your sleeves and start doing things. I think that if you're kind of just passively observing the world, it is hard to have concrete ideas. It is hard to have inspiration. Inspiration requires that you get involved. Whether that means noticing something, something at the grocery store and then having the idea to ha help uh, you know, blind people. Or it means that as you play games, you observe perhaps a certain level or a map or a game and you have, you know what? You have an idea, you know what? It would be really great if I could just change this one thing and then you know, modify things. That's the sort of engagement, you know, that, that generates passion and ideas and creativity. And th there's two reasons for that. I think one reason is because you get to see what others have done. Innovation and, and ideas, they're all about connecting dots. So if you can observe what others have done, you can say, well, wait a minute, this is very smart and very interesting, but actually if I change this and this, it will be interesting and new and exciting. And so that's really um, kind of how you go about it. You know, one step at a time, you just engage with the world, whether that's the virtual or the physical world, and the ideas, they will start naturally flowing because you, you wouldn't be able to help yourself. You always have ideas about what you can do differently and hopefully better. Awesome. So I'm sure the kids are paying attention to what he said. Uh, there's a curious uh, question that I just had l listening to, you know, the interesting things that you were covering. Uh, you said that, you know, a lot of us don't really know what we end up doing. So when you were growing up, what is it that you wanted to do? <laughs> That's a great question. And um, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do. Um, and my strategy, if I could call it a strategy, was to just try a little bit of everything. For example, I did an internship in, in a bank. And I found very quickly that I really didn't want to work in a bank. Uh, but I couldn't have known this, uh, of course. I have no idea what a bank is. And therefore, for me to, to make that statement, I had to try it. So I went and I did an internship there. And I did some uh, work uh, you know, in a media company, in a, in a, in a radio, actually. Uh, and I found, you know what, it's just also not for me. So it's not about any given experience. It's about doing small little projects. I definitely spend so much time trying different digital projects. 
uh, you know, I would write all these little programs, all these little games. And that, that was just wonderful because I truly loved the innovation, the creativity and so forth that flowed through it. So I know for a lot of, you know, if you're a 10 year old child or so, you're probably looking at all the grownups and, and seeing them determined and, and doing things. And you can think, oh, they, they, they know, must know. But it's very often not the case. Very often you discover it. You don't know. So you try things and you're like, wait a minute, that's very enjoyable. I just want to do more of it. And so that's my biggest advice is I, I assure you that just like I didn't know, most people don't know. So the best gift that you can give to yourself is to just try things and have an open mind. And the answers, they'll start coming to you just very, very naturally. Amazing. So try things, have an open mind. Okay, our next question for you is, uh, what do you think, like, you know, in the poll also, you saw some interesting results coming in that a lot of them want to become entrepreneurs and they want to open their own organizations. So according to you, what's better to work in a firm or to open your own startup? That's a question from one of the students. That's a great question. I think, first of all, it's, it's really commendable that so many people want to start uh, 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 you know, their own company, uh, and, you know, and, and you have so much time to try that and to do that. And, and my advice is twofold. I think first, just like I was talking about earlier, you don't know where the starting a company is for you. Uh, and so you should try it. If you want to, you should try it. And if you try it and you like it, fantastic. You can continue to do it. You can, you can build different companies or products or apps or games or whatever you want to do. And, and that's a, you know, the entrepreneurial journey is a very rewarding journey. But if you discover that you don't, it's not for you, that you just, it doesn't speak to you, you know, because, you know, it's one thing to have the idea for it. It's another thing to actually do it, right? It's, it's a different experience. So if you discover that it's not for you, do not be alarmed, do not be concerned, just do something else. You know, that's the beauty of the modern world. You can do so many things. Uh, you can be a creator, you can uh, you can work at a company, you can just do so many different things, so many industries, so many products. So again, I would say starting companies is truly wonderful. It is not for everybody, but it can be very rewarding if it is for you. So for those that want to try it, I, I want to encourage them to give it a shot and to not give up. You know, it's hard. So give it a real shot. Do, do your best. And if you then discover, you know what, I'm not getting en enough enjoyment out of it. Don't even think twice. Just move on to something that gives you more enjoyment. And, and you arrive at a good place eventually. Great. The last question that we have for you uh, is more on the contribution to society and community. So we won't often think about it, but what do you think, you know, uh, how can games contribute to society and community? Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a really wonderful question. I certainly think about it a lot. And I think that games are one of the best social glues that we have. You know, what's truly amazing about games is that you just, you're just excited and immersed in an experience and you get to make friends and learn to collaborate internationally, globally uh, with all sorts of people. And so that sort of people coming together, your games shine and are the best uh, because I have made friends uh, with people all over the world from Korea to the United States to Germany and of course, in my home country of Bulgaria, with folks, and I've never met them actually. <laughs> we just play together um, and we love playing together. And I think that's a really special thing about games. They're, they're very uh, engaging uh, in a way that everybody can participate with. And that's, uh, that's truly special. It, it doesn't really exist that much uh, outside uh, of games. And so I think that uh, games, in, when, they, when they're at their best, games bring us together, they help us be better personally, teaching us skills and, and, and so forth. They help us, you know, make new friends, uh, learn new things, but also as a society, as a, as a world, help us come together. Um, and I think that's, uh, that's really wonderful. Wow. That was such a beautiful message. Okay, by the way, there are a lot of YouTubers who are sending us questions. And there's one which we really liked, which is how do you deal with rejection? So important to know that. <laughs> Rejection is a constant companion in life. You don't have to be an entrepreneur uh, to be rejected, just to be clear. Uh, you can be, uh, you know, rejected from a job or maybe you wanted to go to one school or take one class and you just couldn't quite make it. And I think that it's not easy to deal with rejections. I think that it requires kind of, you know, 
uh, uh, fortitude. It requires resilience. And, you know, uh, nobody enjoys rejection, but I think it's a very valuable teacher. And so what I would say is, um, yeah, you know, do not uh, ignore it uh, because, you know, it's, it's hard to deal with rejection, uh, but try to try to learn from it. Um, rejection teaches you something. Maybe it teaches you that you should have done something differently. Maybe it teaches you that how to be better. Or maybe it teaches you, you know what, this isn't the place for me anyway. Uh, that actually happens a lot with schools. When you apply to different schools, it, it can be hard to understand what different schools are good at. But actually, different schools are definitely specializing in different things. And so um, whatever the situation may be, that's an educational rejection, a personal rejection, a career, career-related professional rejection, unfortunately, rejection is, is there always. Uh, it's just part of life. But I think that it can just teach us so many different things. And so I would say, uh, you know, share with your parents, share with your friends. Do not try to, you know, bottle it in. Try to work through this together and see what did I learn from this rejection? Every rejection is an opportunity to learn how to do something differently and hopefully better so that the next time you, you get in or you do the thing you wanted to do and, and then you overcome those rejections. And by the way, when you overcome the rejection, you feel this incredible uh, sense of accomplishment. So they, they make accomplishments also feel much more important. Can you imagine a world that whatever you wanted to do, you could just do it? I mean, that would be so boring. There would be no challenge, but overcoming the challenge, that's very special. And so uh, do not fear rejection, uh, you know, work to, to overcome it. Uh, and, and you learn a lot, a lot along the way. Wow. Then we just, uh, you know, want to go on and on. And we know there are a lot of other questions, but we will also have our young visionaries back who've been patiently uh, waiting. And we would love for you to stay back because our young visionaries and our CEOs for the day would love to have an interaction with you. So can we get back our young visionary, Advait, please? Can I? Okay. Okay. Um... Yep, I'll share my screen. So Advet, uh, while you bring your screen up, we know you've been patiently waiting. How did you enjoy the session so far? You, I'm sure I saw you and you were like really hooked onto it. So what did you learn from it today? So I learned that um, gaming um, can actually help you like what you want to be and like, it will help you in thinking skills and like to help you believe in yourself. Wow, amazing, right? Coming from a 10 year old. So Advet is also a chess player, a swimmer and a piano player. So Advet, we can't wait for you to present your idea. Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Advet Chikla. I am nine years old from Germany. I am also a certified game developer from Moita Junior. Today, I'm pleased to present my app idea named Guided Balcony Gardening in front of all of you. Getting fresh Indian vegetables is a big problem in many countries. Of course, you can always buy them or order them online in Asian stores, but there's no guarantee if they're fresh or not. The same thing also happened with me. Here in Germany, it's also very hard to get fresh Indian vegetables. And when we ordered them, there weren't any guarantees if they were fresh. That's when I decided to plant my own vegetables, utilizing my kitchen and balcony space. I grew tomato, potato, coriander, and mint. I also used biofertilizer made from kitchen waste to help them grow. The vegetables tasted so much better than, than the vegetables we ordered online. But as the weather got colder outside, all of them died. And that's when I realized my mistake. I didn't have proper and enough knowledge to grow my own vegetables. That's when I decided to make an app that will give the detailed information how to grow your own vegetable and plants at home, utilizing your kitchen and balcony space from start till end. Now I will tell you how my app will work. My app will detect the user's location, followed by their season and weather condition, and give them the list of vegetables and plants that they can plant in that particular area. Once a user chooses a plant or vegetable, my app will give the detailed information how to grow that plant from start till end. There is a second option in which the user has to swipe to the other screen and type in a particular plant. 
Once the user enters a particular plant, my app will give the basic needs of that particular plant. For instance, how much water and sunlight it needs or what type of soil it needs. Um, Amazing. My app also, if the user has if the user faces any difficulties in finding the seeds or whatever they need to grow their plants, my app also has a link that when the user clicks on it, my app will take the user to Amazon or eBay where they can order anything what they need to grow their plants online. My app also provides a special feature um, which connects the user to other um, like-minded people in Facebook communities where they can exchange ideas or information. In this way, you can grow your own fresh vegetables at home, utilizing your kitchen and balcony space and stay healthy. I would also like to thank my teacher, Kiran, from whom I learned a lot. Thank you for listening to me. Wow, Adver, that was just fantastic. I know Dan is like dying to say something. Yeah, I wanted to say that I am trying to actually make my own little garden and I have uh, failed many times. So I cannot wait to uh, try your app and to learn how to do it. Uh, I have some, I have definitely don't have your experience and your expertise here. You just looking at this picture, you, you've obviously, uh, you know, outdone me already, but I, I can't say uh, this sounds like a wonderful idea. And I just wanted okay. to say congrats on, on the. Mm, thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much. And Kiran, anything that you want to say? Uh, what a fantastic yes. student yes. you have. So yes, uh, very uh, so greetings to everyone. And yes, thank you, Purva, so much. So yes, so this is because of Advait that I am a part of this. And he has really, really made me proud. So Advait, from the day one that I have started with him, he has always been coming up with new ideas. He's always been making new things. So, you know, uh, apart from what he was learning in class, he was always doing something new every time. And apart from coding, I would like to say Advait plays the piano really well. So there were times in the class where he had played those lovely songs. So Shape of You is a song which is his and my both favorite. So he played that song a couple of times for me. And wow. also uh, he is very good with Lego. He creates awesome in uh, awesome stuff with those Lego blocks, and he's really, really good at it. And coding, he is the best at coding. And at the age of nine, he is doing wonders with it. So hats off to you, Advit, and I'm really proud of you. Thanks, Kiran. Thank you, Purva. Thank you, everyone. Amazing. You have to play for us next time in the next event, Advit, for sure. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> perfect. Thanks a lot. Uh, okay. With that, we move to. Manav, uh, our next young visionary. So Manav, uh, we are waiting for you. And now this is a student who's actually taking a lot of interest in science and he has topped a lot of essay and speech competition. His innovative vision revolves around managing footfalls within premises and improving social distancing measures. Uh, wow, Manav, we can't wait to welcome you. Um, shall I share my screen? Yes, please, Manav. Hello, everyone. I am Manav Prashti. I study in Standard 5 in DAB Public School, Chandrasekhar Pur, Bhuvaneshwar. I am a Phytech junior student and I'm glad to introduce my idea named Be Safe Inside. We all have been to public places such as shopping malls, supermarkets, monuments, etc. And most of the times we know these places are overcrowded. Due to overcrowded places, we cannot maintain social distancing, which leads to the loss of lives in this COVID situation. Let me tell you, it is not only about the current pandemic scenario, but otherwise also too many people at a particular place might cause health issues such as suffocation, spread of communicable diseases and hygiene issues. The shopping malls or supermarkets should allow a presence of fixed number of people within the premises and should instruct a certain number of people to await their turn outside. 
the public places should attach a sensor along with a counter at the entrance and the exit. The sensor at the entrance and the exit should detect the passage of each person to the entrance and exit respectively and to increment or decrement the counter value by one for each person. The counter value should be visible through LED display. People outside should be instructed to wait till availability and should be mandated to maintain social distancing. Tailgating should be prevented in order to enable proper tracking of people at the entrance and the exit. I'm sure this idea is going to help in saving many lives. At the end, I would also like to thank my teacher, Surya Magdalen P, a lot to help me with this idea. Thank you so much for your patient hearing. Thank you, Manav. That was fantastic. And we hope you're enjoying the event. Okay, great. So with that, uh, we move to our next, uh, you know, event, which is the CEOs for the day. Uh, we have the remaining winners here with us. So can we have them all on the screen, please? Okay, great. Are we on? Justice, Adve, Madhav, Kalia, Julian, Okay, we can see all of you now. So uh, just so we know, uh, Dayan, they've just been waiting to speak to you. Dayan, you're a CEO, you have been a CEO and we have these young CEOs. Okay, so uh, is there something that you would like to ask them? Well, I wanna ask how they are uh, kind of uh, managing uh, the day to day, I think it's very hard to be a CEO. There's a lot to do. And so I'm certainly very curious how they're approaching doing the many, many things that you have to do when you're in. Can any, any of the young CEOs answer that? Decode that for Dian. Like, how do you be a CEO? What do you manage? Julian, would you want to answer? We are basically, CEOs are chief executive officers. We're basically basically so like kind of like the leaders of the company we like the manager of managers wow so we're the manager of managers we manage everything okay our next question to all of you and anyone any kid can answer that okay why do you love playing games yes justice um i like playing games because I just, I just enjoy it all around. It's something that I just really like to do. Okay, great. I like to, Can... I like to play um, a lot of video games with my friends. Awesome. And I like to like to hang out with my friends a lot. So. Okay, so love to play video games and hang out with your friends a lot. Okay, now uh, kids pay attention. What did you enjoy learning while building games? Can any of our young CEOs answer that? Mohammed uh, Zayan is also on. I know he wanted to answer this. So Mohammed, you can unmute yourself. Yeah, Zayan, you're Hello? on. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, so do you want to share what did you enjoy the most while building games? You've been building a lot of games, right? I enjoy, because I was building games, I enjoyed that I was doing something productive. Wow. Because I was learning something in a fun way. Fun way. So in short, I was learning, I was playing, I was having fun. That too at the same time. Amazing. So you learned, you had fun at the same time. Any other kid wants to add that? Why do you love playing games? I like playing games. I like playing games because it helps me to learn while having fun. And games also improves my critical thinking and problem solving skills. Awesome. That was fantastic. So ladies and gentlemen, this was our young CEOs. Dan, any anything else that you want to say for them? 
I just want to wish them luck to say how impressive everything you're doing is. I think it's very special and, and I'm glad you're having fun while learning. And I just want to, again, wish you luck uh, going forward. Hope you create many exciting things. Uh, you, you know, we'll quickly check if all the kids have spoken. Is there anyone left who's not spoken yet and would like to take this opportunity? Madhav? Yes. Devi? Do you want to say something uh, again about games? What did you like the most? Anything that you want to share? Um, I like playing... Um, Minecraft, the game Minecraft, because first of all, I can make huge builds like the Roman Colosseum and also um, make rockets that actually work. Wow, rockets that actually work. Amazing. Adve, you're on mute. I know you wanted to say something as well. Can we hear something from you? What games do you like? Adve is paying attention and unmuting himself. Yes, you're on. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Absolutely. Okay. I like playing um, open world games, such as um, Minecraft, where you can explore how you will. Like you said, you can make choices on your own. Like like um, Breath of the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on um, Nintendo Switch or Minecraft wow. on literally every single gaming console amazing and kalia did you also tell us what you like the most no miss okay so which game do you like the most i like playing roblox the most because it it has multiple games and it you never get bored of it so oh so you never get bored of them okay great so madhav uh, was here as well and Madhav has been quiet unless he said something and Devi as well so we would love to hear from the two of you the audience is really waiting for both of you to speak Madhav Actually, what my do you favorite games are uh, Among Us and Scribble.io because you never get bored of them and I really like playing games because uh, I do have fun playing them and it nurtures our creativity and it shows our quick reactions to the situation of the game where so you can actually win them. Amazing. Coming from you, Madhav, that was amazing. So, Davi, I know you've spoken, but is there any parting message that you want to give to the audience? Anything that you want to tell them that they should do? Me? Yes. yes. Any messages for anyone? That you should keep on having questions and keep on having a big, big mind on curiosity and keep on working hard. Okay, great. They, they really are CEOs, Dan, I'm sure, right? <laughs> it's like, you know, <laughs> a lot of <laughs> discussions happening here. Okay, on that note, thank you so much, kids. We just simply loved interacting with you, our little CEOs, and all the best for your future. Now, we know that we asked you three clues for the treasure hunt. Does everybody remember that? Okay, so clue one. I was created due to a coding error in a famous game. Clue two, I got so famous, they incorporated me in the logo of the game. And clue three, I appear in Minecraft anytime, explode and cause damage. And the answer is, Creeper. And the winners are Krut Krutartha and Rehan Siddiqui. Congratulations. Very well done. We are so proud of you. Okay, so with that, uh, we know we are four minutes uh, over time, but let me just thank our lovely audience for staying put with us today. We hope it was very enjoying for you just as it was for us. 
and uh, YouTube, by the way, burst with the response. So we are loving it. And there aren't any parting comments for the audience from you. And we could just call it a day. I just want to thank uh, everybody and, and, and the organizers for the opportunity to be here. And I want to wish everybody best of luck. I hope you enjoy playing games and learn valuable skills at the same time. Okay, brilliant. So thank you so much. And we are going to look forward to your uh, to having all of you at the next Creator Space event. On that note, uh, this is your host, Purva, signing off. Have a fantastic night ahead and a lovely Sunday. Take care, everyone.